So the last time we were here, um, or we were all together, we were celebrating the Down Easters 15 years. And now today, on the anniversary of 16 years of the Down Easters operation, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what's happened since we were here last. So since last year, when we were um, celebrating the Down Easters 15th birthday, um, we've transported more than 540,000 passengers, the equivalent of 43 million point seven passenger miles, and generated 9.2 million in passenger revenue. Of the people who rode the Down Easter, about 60,000 of them were seniors, generating about $700,000 in passenger revenue. Another 113,000 of them are pass riders, multi people who ride the train on a regular basis, generating about 1.5 million passengers. There are also about 17,000 kids and 2,000 veterans or military personnel. About 5,200 passengers who, tra who traveled with us had a disability, and about 8,326 traveled as part of a group. Another 3,500 traveled with a package or the train to Maine BOGO. We transported more than 250 pets and 320 bicycles. And we took thousands of people to planned activities in Boston and Maine, but also a lot of unscheduled special events, like the Women's March in Boston and, of course, the Super Bowl parade. The Great Dome Car was a hit again, and we turned to the, for the, its second year, um, even during the eclipse, which was kind of fun to ride the Dome Car during the eclipse, even though the eclipse didn't really happen here, but <laughs> got TV coverage. <laughs> and we brought smiles to the faces of hundreds of kids just a couple weeks ago when we launched our first ever Ride with Santa event. All in all, the Down Easter Sweet 16 year has been pretty sweet with ridership and revenue growth exceeding the previous year by double digits. Compared to last year, ridership is up by 47,000 riders, that's 17.4%. Revenue is up by $1.3 million, that's 10.4%. We broke ridership records in nine out of the past 12 months, including having our best ever month of any month ever in July of 2017, when we transported more than 57,306 passengers. We actually did a little better on the revenue side. We actually exceeded our revenue um, records in 10 of the past 12 months, exceeding the $1 million mark in revenue in July of 2017 for the very first time. But we came back and did it again and beat that record by another 10,000 in August. So we had two months at, at over a million dollars. And this past November, which was our second bus ever busiest November with over 42,000 riders, it wasn't quite a record breaker, but we did have our best um, average revenue per passenger ever at $18.80 a passenger. In fact, barring any complications, I think that calendar year 2017 and hopefully fiscal year 18 will be the best in our history. But of course, as we know and we can see, sometimes there are complications. Um, the Down Easter. Um, uh, this, bring the this brings the Down Easter's 16-year cumulative total to a total of 6.8 million riders, traveling 553 million passenger miles, and generating $102 million in passenger revenue. That's not all. We had a great year in the cafe as well, which sold over $750,000 in food. That was an increase of about 20%. In case you're wondering what they sell, well, about 7,000 hot dogs, 25,000 bottles of water, and yeah, 30,000 cans of beer. <laughs> Go Celtics! But there's more. Aside from running trains, lots of other things have happened behind the scenes. We finished our two major ARA projects as, as those funds sunsetted, the expansion project and the Haverline project, representing $65 million of investment. We also upgraded three grade crossings and repaired two culverts. We started work on the Royal Siding Project, currently underway in Falmouth and Cumberland, and are finalizing the completion of signal work near the Brunswick Layover Facility. This work could not progress and we couldn't succeed without the support of our railroad partners. So I'd like you to thank, join me in thanking and recognizing the team at Pan Am, MBTA, and Keola. So thank you. <laughs> we organized a stakeholder group and selected a consultant for the Lewiston-Auburn Passenger Rail Service Plants who are looking at growth which will officially kick off next week. And we spent some time with Wayne and George trying to find ways to connect the Down Easter better to the Northeast Corridor. And we've begun to explore the feasibility of operating a seasonal weekend Down Easter service to Rockland. Can't imagine why. 
We've also had some organizational changes. The terms of two long-term board members, Chairman Marty Eisenstein and our Treasurer John Bubier, um, were expired, and they were replaced by Charles Large and Brian Hobart, and we're very fortunate that John Melrose is now the Chairman of the Board of NEPRA. And through all of this, we've been able to maintain an overall customer satisfaction score of 91%. And it's important to note that both on the crew side and on the food service side, the personnel on the train, satisfaction rating of 93%. That's astonishing. And I also, I didn't realize that folks from Drum Mac were going to be here today, but that 91%, that's you guys. 91% cleanliness on an Amtrak train. Pretty impressive. And most importantly, no passenger injuries, no major crew injuries, and no major safety violations. So please join me in thanking our operating partners, Amtrak, Nextime, and Drummond. You know, earlier this week, the Amtrak's Vice President of Marketing spent a few days riding the Downeaster service and visiting stations. His overall observation was that he noticed a difference in the Downeaster, which is what we've been talking about. The small touches, the attention to detail, he said he could tell that people really care about this service, and it showed. He spoke about his positive experience on the trains and with crews and in the cafe and at stations, noting that when he and his wife got off the train last Saturday night in Exeter and asked the person who was shoveling the snow there how they could get to their hotel, he offered them a ride. You know, for as much as the Downeaster train is, a, is unique, so is our Downeaster experience. And so much of it has to do with our station community ambassadors and volunteers. We thank you for your contributions because that's the difference. You truly set us apart. So thank you to our station community. And now, of course, those of you know that my pride and joy is the team at NEPRA, which has been spoken of. Um, a little bit here, but you know, these are the most professional people, experienced rail management team, the best in the business. They're dedicated, they're talented, they're committed, committed with integrity and enthusiasm. And I'm going to introduce them, the ones who are here, and ask them to stand up. Brian Beeler, our manager of passenger services, Natalie Bogart, marketing director, Jennifer Crosby, marketing and sales coordinator, Steve Goodlett, data specialist, Jim Russell, our manager of special projects. Marina Douglas couldn't be here today, and we have a new uh, graphic designer who wasn't able to be here today, too. So thank you very much. Thank you. you know, together we have accomplished a tremendous amount against the odds, and there's so much more to do. Our world is changing so rapidly, and things are so unpredictable. So I'm going to leave you today with a comment and then a favor. Comment. I really appreciate all of you, all the work that you do, the members of Train Riders Northeast, for what you've accomplished. You know, things are changing so much in our world, and I kind of look at it as kind of a toddler mentality. We live in a world when people don't get what they want when they want it. They stomp their feet and pitch a fit. Um, it's kind of like a tantrum, trying to point fingers and cast blame. But you know, the relationship that we have with train riders is really special because we've developed a working relationship and an understanding that even though we can't get everything we want just when we want it, we look for the bigger picture, look for the common goals, look for the long range, and make sure that even if we have a difference of opinion on something, a difference in timeline, different objectives, we all work together to protect the service as a whole and to protect the, the industry as a whole. And that's something really special because everybody has different perspectives and opinions and goals and objectives, but nobody here has a magic wand. Please don't take what we have for granted. It's important that you continue to work as hard as you did way back when. And don't ever settle. Don't stop pushing forward. Don't stop pushing us. Don't stop promoting a vision of a better, more seamless passenger transportation system. Don't stop being the voice of our train riders. We need all of you to continue your good work to advance for more funding, better service, and to keep us on our toes, to be a convener of supporters, and to continue to express the voice of the public. Because after all, you are Train Riders Northeast. So to Wayne, George, and all of you, <coughs> Thank you for all you have done. Please keep going. Make the most of every moment. It's time to take the train.